everyone. Welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to whip stitch a shape with a point, so a star or a leaf or something like that. I did a whip stitch tutorial. It's one of the first tutorials I did when I started this channel, but I think I'll do a little review. So I'm going to do a couple of different shapes a shape with points, a circle, and a couple other shapes as well. Whip stitch is the foundation of all these pieces, which we then embellish on with various threads. So it's important to get it right. I've got a couple of tips that I found um, that work for me, and perhaps they'll work for you as well. So I hope you'll stick with me, grab something to stitch with, and let's stitch along together. Please don't forget to hit the like button and do subscribe. If you want to get a notification in the mail, you also need need to click on the little bell to the right of the subscribe button. Let's get started. For my whip stitch, I've chosen a couple of different shapes. So I just cut out a couple of leaves here. I have a little flower shape that I'm going to put here and some random circles here. So I'm just going to pin these down and I've chosen my threads. I want my threads to match the shape that I'm appliquing down. I love Sue Spargo's Alana wool threads. They're just fabulous and she actually has these dyed to match the dyes of her wool. This is a wool that I dyed but it's close enough and what you do when you aren't sure if you have a wool that doesn't have an exact match, you just go a shade lighter. If you go darker, it creates an almost shadow. Whereas if you go lighter, the eye, after it's all whip stitched down, and then once you start embellishing it, you won't even notice it. These are going to match beautifully with her, with the wools. For the Alana wool, I'm always going to use a chenille number 24 needle. I'm going to start with the leaf shape. I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. I did a video on this, and you should go look at it for threading a needle and knotting. It covers it all much more in depth. But just quickly, you want to hold your thread in your non-dominant hand. I'm left-handed. I'm holding my thread in my right hand. If you're right-handed, you're going to hold your thread in your left hand. You then bring your needle to the thread. If it does that, which it might, you're going to cut your little frayed bit off. If you're still, let's say I still couldn't do it. This actually is done and I can pull it through, but let's say I couldn't. Let's say it was just so frayed and I wasn't able to do it. Then the second way you do it is you bend the thread over the needle like this. You hold that and you squeeze it and then you thread your needle that way. Either way is going to work. Okay, I'm left-handed so I thread my needle on my freshly cut end and I do my quilter's knot on the opposite end. If you're right-handed, you're going to do the opposite of that. My quilter's knot. I'm going to lay my needle on top of my thread. I'm going to wrap two, three, four times around, hold this, those wraps down, and pull my needle through. That gives me a quilter's knot. I'm not going to come up on the point. I'm going to come up somewhere away from the point. We're going to work up to that point. I'm going to take little stitches, or as Sue says, little bites. I want my stitches to be perpendicular. I don't want them to slant. When I take my needle, this is the slant. The slant is going to be in the back of the work, not in the front. And I'm going to go up. I'm going about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch in from my wool applique shape. I'm going down exactly where this ends. I'm coming up about an eighth of an inch or so away from that other stitch. I keep them fairly short and I keep them fairly close. I don't want to pull my thread so tightly that I get this. Do you see how it pulls it down and you're going to get a kind of a scalloped edge. I want this wool to float. That's what I want. I want it to give the appearance of it just floating on there, on top of the other, whether it's fabric or wool. Go down. Now, here's my point. I am going to go right here. I'm going to go down into my point. I'm 
going to go back up right into that hole that that stitch went in. I'm going to go to the side here, come back up into that same hole, and go to the other side. I've made a little trident. So there's a single stitch going up, there's one going this way, and there's one going this way, all coming, emanating from the same hole. And now I'm going to continue back. close to this point now. I'm going to come up. I'm going to go down to that point. I'm going to go up into that same hole that I used for the point close to it. I'm going to come down on one side, come up, go down on the other, and begin stitching along again. Do you see how this thread is disappearing? You can't see it, even though it was not, it was definitely not an exact match. It barely shows. just wanted to record another point. So here I am at my end. I'm going to come up and I'm going to go down right into that point. Do you see? Now I'm going to come up into that hole where I... and I'm going to go to the side. And then I'm going to come up into that hole again. And I'm going to do the other side. And that is my point. Now, if you get this little bit here, see this little thread here? That's okay. Once you've finished, you can just clip that off. and then you continue. Stick with me because I'm going to do a circle and I'm also gonna do this other flower shape that's a little bit more irregular. There's my whip stitched leaves and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Now this is a more textural uh, wool and so I wanna be especially careful not to pull that wool thread too much. I want it to just hold this piece down, but I don't want it to be taut. I don't want to have a, a scalloped shaped piece, which is what will happen if I pull this thread too much. So it's a fairly relaxed stitch. The tension is fairly relaxed. I'm just going to go around my little curve here. I try to keep it pretty uniform, but I don't worry about it when there's a stitch here or there that goes a little askew. It really doesn't matter. One of the things I love so much about the wool applique that Sue Spargo does is it's so forgiving. And then once you start embellishing, you don't notice any of it. So there it is. And you can see the stitches if you look closely. But from far away, it's it's hard to notice them. I think two of the biggest um, issues that people have when they whip stitch in the beginning is getting this tension down so that it's not too much 
and it's not so loose that it's that you're getting these kind of loopy bits either. It's just enough to sort of carry, hold the fabric, the wool applique shape to the background without changing the shape of the that you're appliquing down. The second issue I think that people have trouble with is just getting the stitches somewhat uniform. Again, it unless they're radically different, it's just not going to matter. And you'll get better with practice, for sure. And that's my little funny shape. Start with my thread. And I'm just going to keep those stitches, hopefully somewhat uniform, in length and in spacing. demonstrate how to whip stitch these tiny little circles. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin them in place. I take my needle and come up put on the edge there, just like I did on the bigger circle. I think the only difference between this and a larger circle is I do tend to keep my stitches a little bit smaller and closer together. Otherwise it's exactly the same. I'm trying to keep that tension from being too taut I want it to be a pretty relaxed so that that little dot is floating. I also want to have enough of these whip stitches to really secure it so there's no area of it that's flopping around. All right, so I managed to get 11 in there. That's pretty typical. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to receive email notifications, you'll also need to hit the little bell icon to the right of the subscribe button. I love hearing from you, so please leave any comments or questions you might have in the comment section below. If there's a stitch I haven't done that you'd like to see me demonstrate, you can tell me that as well. Here's to stitching together.